Judge Wood. Two questions? Yeah. Now you've been waiting to, to bring a trophy back for, for quite a while. What's, what's the feeling like? You know, I, I think <laughs> anytime you can bring a trophy back uh, to any program, it's a big deal because championships are hard to win. I, I don't care if they're in on neutral courts or you're talking about conference championships, obviously NCAA championship. Th those are very difficult to do. So for this team right now, this early in the season to, to call themselves champions, it's pretty special to see their reaction to it. I think it gives them a um, tremendous burst of confidence. And hopefully it'll give our students a burst of confidence to believe in them and come out and support them as well, too, because uh, what they have done has not been easy to do. Uh, we played three really, really good basketball teams, three different games, and we were able to adapt, adjust, and be able to do it. So it's a special moment for us for our program right now. I know a lot of people are su surprised about this. Did you think this team was ready to go down there and then pull something like that off and then beat three, three good teams, like you said, three kind of prominent mid-major programs? And the thing about this team that I've, I've said all along, it's a, it's a great shooting team, and it's the best shooting team that I've coached in practice. And with the numbers they put up and some of the things that we do to measure that, it, it's, it's just mind-boggling to me how much better they are, even them Oregon teams, in practice. And then all of a sudden we get the scrimmages and we get the exhibition games and those numbers are still there. Now we have to get the counting games. And the more this team starts to relax and play, they've had some incredible second halves at putting that numbers. They've gone on some incredible runs. So to say we were going to do this well, I certainly felt like we had the capabilities to play extremely well and play with any of these teams. You don't know how well until you get into the battle. And the adversity of the St. Joe's game and being able to come through that just made us stronger and more confident. Uh, we controlled the St. Mary's game, and we basically controlled the San Diego State game as well, too. What game do you think they did the most growing up in? Was it the St. Joe's during the 26-0 run? It was probably the St. Mary's game because the, the St. Joe's game was kind of a, a duplicate of the Texas Southern game, but you did that here at home. And to do that on a neutral court of a team that went on a 26-0 run on you, you never felt the game was out of, out of rhythm. People talk about all the time, you must be given one heck of a halftime speech. Well, we don't give speeches, we make adjustments. And as coaches, we made adjustments, the team listened, they made the adjustments, and you could just feel the momentum in the change in the game changing really literally every five minutes and, and, and knowing we could come back. But the St. Mary's game against a team, an opponent that's picked to win the West Coast Conference, uh, Randy's been there 17 years, the amount of success they've had, uh, 64 straight games and they won when they shot over 50 percent we shoot 58 and, and, and win the game that was an incredible win because that is a high quality basketball program not that St. Joe's isn't but the fact that he did it in, in day two against that caliber of opponent was pretty impressive and just things like pick and roll and, and your guys' half court offense and, and defense when you guys didn't have to rely on the one three one you guys showed a lot of man and, and played strong defense What's that say about a young team where they're growing up in those types of characteristics on the court? I think, again, it's a really skilled team that can spread the floor. And, and the way we shoot the ball, we got four guys that are shooting 50% or more from the three-point line. And we're very difficult to guard, so that allows you to put the ball in the middle of the floor and run the pick and roll. But the biggest difference with this team is on the defensive end of the floor. Um, when you talk about the one three one a gimmicky defense that brought us back against Texas Southern, it brought us back against St. Joe's, but we were 95% man-to-man against St. Mary's. A team of that caliber, uh, to be able to, to win a game with your man with a team this young, what you have to understand is that that means you've got great growth potential because we're nowhere near where we're going to be come conference time and halfway through a conference season. So it's encouraging to see them playing this well and adapting to adjustments uh, for a young team right now. That's a good sign. Let's say about your coaching staff as well for, for Ed and, and, and Benny on the fly to for you guys to really take hold of the adjustment period and, and see your players buy in and turn it out. And well, first of all, I think it says a lot about Coach Graham and, and Coach Dominguez who are no longer with us because those are 30-year veterans in, in terms of the X's and O's and coaching the game. And, and we put in a system uh, that is really, really good and that this team has adapted to. Where Ed and Benny have come in, uh, they've been excellent at what I call moving the needle with players. Uh, their confidence, their courage, having them step up being more accountable. So they've done their part in, in that area while at the same time having to learn this system because they don't really understand it yet because they haven't been around it enough. But the guy that has really made a big difference in all this, uh, obviously Coach Allen early on and, and then Coach Tim early on, Marion, those guys were with us last year that do 
understand the system as well. So I'm pleased that I've got an excellent staff that have really done a good job of what I would call moving the needle with this group of guys. Malachi kind of hits that dagger in the, in, in the first game and then goes on to score 24-26 and then really finds his, his shooting stroke. How important was that shot, do you think, for his psyche and his confidence? He kind of struggled with the shot early on and uh, really kind of started to find it in, in Fullerton. I think the tournament was very valuable for Malachi because he has struggled here at home uh, in some games. It's like he was missing something. Uh, that passion, that drive, uh, that, that it factor, as I call it, that he has in his game. All of a sudden now you're on a neutral court with some of the best talent in the country coming in, a uh, team from the Atlantic 10, uh, St. Mary's with all of their hype sitting there and he, he run into a San Diego team that's had, San Diego State has had so much success. It forced him to raise the intensity of his game, the focus, the passion, and sure enough, uh, he took his game to another level. And, and when you're able to do that, now we see the Malachi that we were hoping to see starting this year. Now he needs to bring that intensity back home and do that same thing here. Uh, I think the students coming out will allow him to do that, but it really was the energy of the tournament, the hype of the tournament that forces guys to play at another level. We need that energy in our building for this team to play at another level because they certainly have it in them. Did you tweak his, his three-point stroke at all or was it just a case of kind of shooting himself out of it? The only thing I told him is that in, in practice, we shoot with a clock on him all the time, and we're always playing shooting games, so therefore that shot is up a lot quicker. And I felt like in our games here at home, he was so relaxed and so at such a calm at taking a shot, it almost threw a shot off because he was getting so wide open. The urgency of his shot is the thing that made the difference. And I think, again, when he knows that defense is going to close out on him quicker, when you got a better defender on you in these games we play, it forced him to get a shot off quicker, play harder, play tougher, and that was the tweaking that it needed. And then how, how big was was the bench? And I know last year you, you kind of struggled to get production. This year you, you saw Jeff kind of score 16-11, Carter and, and uh, Quentin that had a pretty good game. Is, is that also kind of a big, big difference from last year's team that you can go to the bench and not just get breathers but, but get scoring and production? Huge difference than last year. And, you know, at times I, I contemplated why I redshirted so much last year uh, with Lon Aqua, uh, Renze Cheatham sitting there, Jamar Aker sitting there. Uh, but we needed to do that for their, their development and everything. Well, this year uh, you've got, you know, 12, 13, we've got 14 players on a roster, of which 13 of them are active to play. That gives you a really deep bench and with our bigs and our guards. So it's a nice luxury to know you can go to a bench and get a guy like Jeff Pollard who has back-to-back -back games of career highs. They know you can go to the bench and get a guy like Carter Skaggs that had at some one point in time made 10 straight three-pointers and is perfect from the free throw line. And you can go to the bench and he's shooting 56% from the three. And then you can get a Quentin Henson, 6'5", athletic, that can go. He really changed the game for us in the St. Mary's game with this athletic system. That's a nice luxury to have, and it makes you more of what I would call a complete team. Did Jeff really t take some time to refine his offensive game? He was a great defensive player last year, but it kind of, kind of feels like he, he's a lot better on the offensive end this year. I think it's just the experience of being in the system, that, that year two of being with us uh, and having the freedom and the green light to shoot it. Uh, he's also an outstanding three-point shooter. People have not seen that piece of his game yet. So uh, he's just getting into a comfort zone. And remember, again, here's somebody that went to, to prep school and played at a higher level out of high school waiting to become a Coug, and then he played last year. So he's kind of in year three out of high school right now, and sure enough, here comes his confidence. Defensively speaking, Arenze, Drick, um, Jeff, and, and Robert Franks showed showed some skill at the defensive end this, this weekend. Is, is that the change that you've seen with the front line where these guys can run and, and, and they're not getting tired? I mean, how, how big of a difference has it been for, for the front line this season? It, it's been a huge difference that we can get up and down the floor. I mean, as good as that Connor and, and Josh was, they weren't the fastest guys up and down the floor. They were, they were productive in the half court. But those guys that you mentioned, uh, Drake and Jeff and, and, and Franks and Cheatham, those guys are fast down the floor, number one. Drake's our best ball handler in transition with the speed. So they get problems bringing the ball on offense, Drake and Robo. And then on the defensive end, they can get down and shut down transition with his number one. Number two, they allow you to press and, and switch and do things we just couldn't do with our bigs uh, in the last two or three years that I've been here. So it's just a different team defensively. Ike Arebu, uh was at our San Diego State game, and I think the first thing out of his mouth was he could not believe how hard we played defensively and how good we were defensively. That's because you have 
a different set of athletes right now, and you can do things defensively, defensively as well. Is, is there a certain time where, where you see maybe a single play where you're like, okay, I've, I've got a different team here? Deontay's storming down the court and, and picking the ball, not giving up on the play, and then he saved it and threw it down court. That was a big momentum change during the game. How many times have you seen those types of plays with them this season? Uh, several. Uh, Milan Aqua going over a scores table here at home. They called it out of bounds, but it was a, it was a good play. Jeff Pollard taking charges. Uh, you know, Carter Skaggs taking charges. Uh, Devon, uh, Viante's play you talked about. Then Malachi had a play in the game where he lost the ball and, and dove full length to steal it back at a critical time in the game. Those are things on the defensive end that you say are the hustle end that, wow, this team has a chance to be really good. But to me, it's on the offensive end. When you see a team that is so unselfish and doesn't hesitate to pass up a shot to give a teammate the better shot, when you see the, the ball movement that we're able to do on the offensive end of the floor, that tells you they're starting to figure some things out right now. And then how often has, has it been for you to have a sophomore point guard whose assist to turnover ratio I believe right now is 28 to 4? That's as probably as impressive as I've seen it so far. I mean, as good as Luke Rittenauer was and Aaron Brooks were, those are some impressive numbers. Ritt Rid didn't turn the ball over either. He's kind of in that same category. But to do it your sophomore season and do it with the speed we play at is the more impressive thing with it. Are there any questions from the phone? Okay. All right, well, thank you. I was just going to ask about Robo. He kind of tweaked his ankles. Is there any concern there? He kind of was able to play, play on that then. No, there's no concern. Of the fact that we, you know, we have a couple of days off, and he can take a third day off if need be. We don't play again until Saturday, so he's got plenty of time, and, and everybody for that matter. It's grueling to play three games in four days, sleeping in strange beds, <laughs> traveling back into Pullman and in and out of Pullman and everything. So, uh, all of these guys need some time to kind of rest and heal up and, and those types of things. But we should all be ready to go come Saturday. Where's the Where's the trophy going? Trophy's going in our locker room. It's going to sit in our office for a few days, but it will sit in our locker room because it will be the defining moment for us with this team, the reference point to how far they've come and the fact that, indeed, it is now their team. When you talk about Robert Franks and, and Malachi and, and Beyonce Daniels, Jeff Potter, this is their team now. Uh, Josh and Ike have moved on, and they can lay claim to leaving footprints here now at Washington State's uh, putting their mark on this program. So they need to see that trophy every day and, and then make some pledges as to what the season's going to be about and put them around that trophy. We can go back and look back on them at the end of the year. So it's a great rallying cry, uh, what we accomplished down there in Anaheim. That was no easy feat whatsoever. We, we grew up as a basketball team in that environment. And then quick dig, when, when you got on the plane, you guys were ready to come back up to Pullman. Did the thought cross your mind, okay, how, how many people are going to be in, in Beeson on Saturday? You know, it has crossed my mind just because of I've always felt like I understood, you know, this program was in a hole when we took it over. And I tell people all the time, you know, we didn't put it in a hole. I'm bringing it out of a hole. So uh, I can't be responsible for way back there. But as we've moved it forward, I've always felt like the old field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. And I feel like we have built it now. This team is right there uh, ready to explode. we got a lot of work to do, but the next step in it is getting the students behind us because it'll allow us to take it to another level. The energy, the defense, the offense, the compassion, the camaraderie, the intensity level that you put on opponents, we need the students now. And this is a this is an enjoyable team that's getting recognized by CBS, by Andy Katz, uh, by Joe Denari, the, the, the bracketology guy. They're recognizing us in the East and across the country. They need to recognize us two blocks away and come into Beasley because we're their team and we have a chance to do something special with this season, but we need the students there to help us get there. They, they're a big part of who we are and our identity.